In this episode, a sailor falls overboard his steamship. His crewmates watch in horror as a shadowy figure emerges from beneath one of the ship's docks. A shark makes a beeline straight for their colleague, who is splashing helplessly in the water, trying to climb back up. Hit the like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying shark attack on Jules Antoine. Welcome to Final Affliction. This is the story of a man who was swallowed whole by a shark. The details from the one and only report are a bit sketchy, as this incident took place back in 1911. But the shocking attack was witnessed by more than 50 crew members aboard the British steamship Aldergate off the coast of Florida. The subsequent newspaper report is the only known written record of the incident, and that is what this account is based on. It was Wednesday, November 8, 1911. Jules Antoine was a watchman aboard Aldergate. This ship was a British-made steel screw steamer. She was first launched in 1906 and was a sizable vessel used to carry general cargo. In the 1800s, Britain built steam-powered ships to carry goods and people across the British Empire. In 1911, one of these ships was docked in Pensacola Bay, Florida. The crew were preparing for the next leg of their voyage. They had already unloaded their wares and were loading the ship back up with stock, maintaining the decks and cleaning the living quarters. At the time, Pensacola was a major port. The area was booming with activity from the lumber industry, and there was a growing fishing economy in the area too. Timber was transported from the northwestern Florida port across the U.S. and all over the world. As watchmen, Jules had an active role in the safe operation of the ship. He would have helped with navigation, ensuring the vessel's safe passage, and dealt with any emergencies on the bridge or decks. During his duties in the port, he accidentally fell overboard. Crew members heard the splash in the water and immediately ran to the sides of the ship. When they looked down, they saw Jules splashing around in the water. He shouted for help as he made his way astern. Frantically swimming through the water, he coughed and spluttered. Just then, the crew from above saw a terrifying sight. From underneath the boat, they saw a huge shadow emerge. Silently, it moved under the water. The distinctive shape of a shark made its way towards the splashing commotion caused by Jules. Witnesses estimated it to be more than 12 feet in length. The crew knew that he was in trouble. They shouted at him to get out of the water, but Jules couldn't swim fast enough. All of a sudden, the shark's head crashed through the surface of the water and grabbed Jules in its immense jaws. It clamped down, crushing Jules as he screamed out. Eyewitnesses describe the scene which would have haunted them for the rest of their days. Jules' legs protruded from one side of the shark's massive mouth and his head and shoulders from the other. The shark nearly snapped him in two, but as Jules uttered his final cries, the shark submerged and disappeared from sight below a bubbling sea of red. Shocked onlookers from surrounding vessels scanned the water for any signs of the predator. The water became still. The dark stain of red blood dispersed. Moments later, the shark emerged once more from beneath a flat-bottom boat that was used to carry timber and passengers between the shore and ships in dock. The crew from Jules' ship watched in abject horror as the shark's gaping mouth revealed the man's body inside. He was being swallowed feet first. All that the onlookers could see was Jules' head and shoulders sticking out of the shark's mouth. He was limp and lifeless. After killing Jules, the shark had dived beneath the surface to reposition its jaws around him, trying to swallow him whole. Seeing the terrible events unfolding, one of the crew members fainted. It must have been a shocking thing to witness. The shark submerged again and disappeared from sight. Sailors from the other vessels on the dock were determined to find the shark. They were terrified to have such a huge predator in the waters surrounding them. They teamed up together and made a plan. The next day, armed with harpoons and guns, they set off in smaller boats to hunt down the shark. It is not reported whether they baited the area, but they spotted a large shark still within the area. It measured 12 feet, or 3.6 meters long, and was prowling the waters once more. When they came within striking distance, the men in the boats launched harpoons at the shark. 
each harpoon was tied to a length of rope that was secured to the boats. When a harpoon sank into the shark's flesh, the rope went taut as the shark's weight began to pull against it. Several harpoons were used to capture the animal. Gradually, they tired the shark down and managed to pull it through the water towards the shore. When they were in ankle-deep water, they jumped out, still holding onto the ropes. They dragged the heavy shark onto the sand. It thrashed around, wounded, tired, and gasping out of the water. The shark was still dangerous. Its gaping mouth revealed its razor-sharp teeth. Its strong, powerful tail slashed from side to side as it tried to get back to the water. The shark was still fighting for survival. The men took out their guns and shot it several times. Its thrashing stopped, blood spilled from its open wounds, and it laid still on the sandy shoreline. Confident it was dead, the men crowded around it. One of the hunters took out a knife and ran it down the length of the shark's underbelly. He slit open the shark's stomach. As the weight of the contents spilled out onto the ground, Jules' entire body flopped out onto the sand. His head had been severed and was not attached to his body, but he was still in his clothes and his boots were still on his feet. The boots were covered in tooth marks. They were imprinted with the shark's multiple rows of teeth. Although they were certain that this victim was Jules, the hunters needed crew members to identify the body. Without a head, Jules' crew members managed to identify him from his unique tattoos. Surprisingly, they also found something else inside the shark's stomach. It was a piece of coral rock weighing approximately 8 pounds or 3.5 kilograms. Maybe the shark accidentally swallowed it when it was predating smaller fish on the reefs. The species of shark was not identified or reported on. Along Florida's coastline, there are about 15 species of shark that frequent the waters. While nine of these species are most common, the remaining six are rarely seen. The people who caught the shark at the time estimated its age to be an incredible 100 years old, although it is unknown how they came to this conclusion. Today, scientists can age sharks by counting the rings or bands that form yearly around the shark's cartilaginous vertebrae. The hunters also measured the shark that killed an eight jewels at 12 feet long. Of the sharks frequently found in Florida's water, only tiger sharks measure up to that kind of length, and their average age span is 15 years. Although great white sharks are more common in the seas north of Florida and on America's east coast, they are occasionally seen further south. In fact, in 2022, a 12-foot-long great white shark weighing 1,600 pounds or 725 kilos has been tracked swimming down America's east coast. It has traveled from Nova Scotia all the way down to Florida. This species of shark would certainly fit the description of Jules Killer. Typically, they can measure anywhere from 11 to 15 feet, although some have been recorded as long as 19 feet. They can also live a very long time. On average, their lifespan is 70 years, but some live much older. At the time, the report stated that the shark that attacked and killed Jules was the largest man-eating shark ever captured in those waters. Specialists stuffed the shark's skin and offered it to the Smithsonian Institution. The busy port probably attracted the shark to the area, and Jules was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was incredibly unlucky to have fallen overboard just when the shark was prowling nearby. Today, shark attacks are rare in Florida. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission say that people are 30 times more likely to be struck by lightning in Florida than bitten by a shark. But that doesn't stop sharks from feasting on people. Each year, dozens of people are attacked by sharks, bringing 10 of them on average to their horrifying final affliction.